Welcome back. This is Occupy Freedom. I'm David Laurie Vanderbeek. I am the next governor of Nevada. If you want to get involved or follow the campaign, you go to NevadaGovernor2014.com. If you want something on this show, you can email me at David at NevadaGovernor2014.com. You can follow us on Facebook, just uh, putting my name, David Laurie Vanderbeek. There's a fan page and my personal page. You can follow it. Our Twitter is U.S. Family Man. <clears throat> and the YouTube channel is just my first and middle name, David Laurie. Uh, where all, we put up all the episodes if you miss it. Now, there's this Super Soldier and Mind Control Summit, the second summit. It's on uh, May 17th through the 19th in Henderson, Nevada. I'm actually uh, concerned with this. I'll be spe speaking briefly there, making some opening remarks, because I am very concerned about the treatment of our soldiers and how they're being experimented on and used as guinea pigs to develop what are called super soldiers. Um, so I believe in listening to everyone and hearing what their concerns are. So if you want to get tickets for that, you go to supersoldiersummit.com uh, and you can get tickets there. So they'll have experts and people who've experienced it firsthand speaking there. Now I'm going to be talking about Benghazi for this entire episode. And I want you to know that I consider it an honor and a blessing to be able to share this information with you. Um, I feel so blessed to be a warrior for the truth and I'm, I'm blessed to be a wolf and not a sheep one of the sheep who believes anything the government tells them and I pray to God every day that he'll protect my wife and my children so that I could be in this position and that God and I want you to know that God's answer my prayers and watching over my family and I want Heavenly Father our Lord to know that I won't fail you um, and so I pray that the Lord will help me to tell the truth and in a manner that pleases him to honor the dead and to bring the true criminals to justice. <clears throat> now, um, we're going to play a clip for you from Hillary Clinton's uh, testimony that she gave back in January. On January 23rd, she had an exchange with uh, Senator Ron Johnson from Wisconsin. And um, in that, she was saying that over and over they said that they didn't know that it was an attack. Uh, because the White House was saying that this was a protest, a spontaneous protest of just demonstrators in the street. And uh, he says, was it because, see, he says, um, talking about that, was it because of a protest or was it because guys walk out one night and decided they'd kill some Americans? Clinton says, what difference at this point, what difference does it make? That's what she said back to them. So let's play Let's play that. Information developing was the situation fluid. Would we reach conclusions later that weren't reached initially? And, and I but, appreciate that. Madam Secretary, do you disagree with me that a simple phone call to those evacuees to determine what happened wouldn't have, wouldn't have ascertained immediately that there was no protest? I mean, that, that, was, that was a piece of information that could have been easily, easily obtained. Well, but, but Senator, within, within, yeah, within hours, if not days. Senator, I, you know, when you're in these positions, the last thing you want to do is interfere with any other process well, that's, going I, I, I realize, on, number one. I realize that's, number I realize two, that's a good excuse. Number two, at, well, no, it's the fact. Number two, I would recommend highly you read both what the ARB said about it and the classified ARB because even today there are questions being raised. Now, we have no doubt they were terrorists, they were militants, they attacked us, they killed our people. But what was going on and why they were doing what they were doing? No, 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 no. Is I, still, I, 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 still again, un again, we no. were misled that there were supposedly protests and then something sprang out of that, an assault sprang out of that, and that was easily ascertained I, that that was not the fact. But, but and the American know, people could have known that within days, and, and they they didn't know that. With all due respect. The fact is, we had four dead Americans. Was it because of a protest, or was it because of guys out for a walk one night who decided they'd go kill some Americans? What difference at this point does it make? It is our job to figure out what happened and do everything we can to prevent it from ever happening again, Senator. Now, okay, honestly... Good. Now, <clears throat> what, we're, what, we're, what we're going to talk about, we're going to detail how comment after comment from Hillary Clinton there was a bold-faced lie. Uh, so she's saying that they that it doesn't matter whether it was a protest or whether it was a terrorist attack. So we're going to detail why that's a problem. We're going to detail how it's a problem that they're saying that they didn't know that it was an attack. <clears throat> now, uh, and there's just so many things. This is 
Fox News exclusive. CIA operators were denied requests for help during Benghazi attacks, sources say. Former Navy SEAL Tyrone Woods was part of a SEAL small team who was at the CIA annex about a mile from the U.S. consulate where Ambassador Chris Stevens and his team came under attack. So there was the attack at the consulate, right? But there were two, there were more than, uh, there were actually three attacks, and the, other, the next one was at the annex, which is a CIA secret safe house. Uh, question, obviously, how did the Al-Qaeda know the location of the secret CIA safe house? Because the attack was not just at the consulate. <clears throat> so, when, see, what happened was, is you had these Navy SEALs, and I'll talk about their mission, but there were Navy SEALs stationed at the CIA annex in Benghazi, and they heard the firing. So when Tyrone Woods, this Navy SEAL, he and others heard shots fired, they informed their higher-ups at the annex to tell them what they were hearing and requested permission to go to the consulate and help out. They were told to stand down. According to sources familiar with this exchange, soon after, they were again told to stand down. Woods and at least two others ignored those others and made their way to the consulate, which at that point was on fire. Shots were exchanged. The rescue team from the CIA annex evacuated those who remained at the consulate and Sean Smith who had been killed in the initial attack. They could, could not find the ambassador and returned to the CIA annex at about midnight. Now, if you heard, if you just listened to Hillary Clinton, she said to the senator that there were approximately 25 to 30 people who were evacuated and she was taking credit for that as if she was the reason why those people were saved by the Navy SEALs. It's clear now that those people were saved because Tyrone Woods and the other people with him disobeyed the orders that they were told not to go and help. See, Tyrone Woods, this Navy SEAL who decided for himself to disobey the standout order, save those people in spite of what Hillary Clinton did. They were telling them to not go and help the people at the consulate. And here she is, when you just listened to her, saying that all these people were saved in spite of her. No wonder she didn't go talk to them. And that's what the senator is saying. Why didn't you talk to those evacuees to ascertain that it was an actual terrorist attack? Now, continuing on. Woods and at least two others ignored them. They, they could not find the ambassador, okay? And they returned to the CIA annex at about midnight. So he was already missing. At that point, they were again called again. They called again for military support and help because they were at taking fire at the CIA safe house or the annex. The request was denied. So now that these Navy SEALs, soldiers, are best trained, most highly trained soldiers are at the CIA annex, which is a secret location that Al-Qaeda should never have known about. So we're asking, how did they know? But they're there. They're asking for help. They're not asking to go help at this point. They're under fire. These are soldiers asking for help. So we have soldiers. I'm repeating this to you to get this through your skulls. I want you to witness the scene in your mind. Your best soldiers at the CIA safe house taking fire, asking for help. Right. There were no communication problems at the annex. According uh, to those present at the compound, the team was in constant radio contact with their headquarters. In fact, at least one member of the team was on the roof of the annex, manning a heavy machine gun when mortars were fired at the CIA compound. The security officer had a laser on the target that was firing and repeatedly requested backup from a Spectre gunship, which is commonly used by U.S. Special Forces to provide uh, special operation teams on the ground involved in intense gunfights, firefights. So you know the movies where you have the Navy SEAL or in the movie Shooter or whoever it is, and they have the laser trained on the target, right? So the, the, the F-16s can come in with the laser-guided missiles and hit those targets. So here we have the SEALs say, we've got the target, We've got the laser pointed at them and just come in and shoot the missile at them. 
Just come and help us. We're under fire. We've got the laser pointed right at him. And nobody came. CIA. So here's what the CIA spokesman says. Jennifer Youngblood. Denied the claims that requests for support were turned down. She said, we can say with confidence that the agency reacted quickly to aid our colleagues during that terrible evening in Benghazi. She said, moreover, no one at any level of the CIA told anybody not to help those in need. Claims to the contrary are simply inaccurate. In fact, it is important to remember how many lives were saved by courageous Americans who put their own safety at risk that night and that some of those selfless Americans gave their lives in the effort to rescue their comrades. Again, taking credit for the thing that they tried to uh, oppose. We'll be right back. Okay, so we're back. Now, we're talking about Benghazi, the fighting at the CIA annex. There was the fighting at the consulate. They rescued those people. The CIA spokespeople are saying they didn't tell, give a stand-down order when they did, and then they said, we we got to take credit for how many people we saw saved in these selfless it was the Navy SEALs that disobeyed the CIA orders, okay? They saved them. Those people at the consulate would have all died if the, if the CIA had gotten their way, if Hillary Clinton had gotten her way, if President Obama had gotten his way, they'd all be dead, 30 people dead. But these Navy SEALs went on and fought at the consulate. They rescued those people. They recovered the body of Sean Smith, and then the f- fighting went on at the CIA annex, for more than four hours, enough time for any planes based at Siganella Air Base just 480 miles away to arrive. Fox News has learned that two separate Tier 1 Special Operations Forces were told to wait, among them Delta Force operators. A Special Operations Team, or CIF, which stands for Commanders and Extremist Force, Operating in Central Europe had been moved to Siganella, Italy, but they were told they were never told to deploy. In fact, Pentagon officials say there were never any requests to deploy assets from outside the country. A second force that specializes in counterterrorism rescues was on hand at Siganella, according to senior military and intelligence sources. According to those sources, they could have flown to Benghazi in less than two hours. They were in the same distance to Benghazi as those that were sent from Tripoli. Specter gunships are commonly used by the special operations community to provide close air support. According to sources on the ground during the attack, the special operator on the roof of the CIA annex had visual contact and a laser pointed at the Libyan mortar that was targeting the CIA annex. The operators were calling in coordinates of where the Libyan forces were firing from. Defense Secretary Leon Panetta told reporters at the Pentagon that there was not a a clear enough picture of what was occurring on the ground in Benghazi to send help. This is the Defense Secretary saying they couldn't send help. They didn't know, even though the SEALs are there on the ground, seeing the enemy, asking for help. Quote, there's a lot of Monday morning quarterbacking going on here, Panetta said Thursday, but the basic principle here is that you don't deploy forces into harm's way without knowing what's going on. Hmm, that's interesting. He's saying they don't know what's going on. Fox News has learned that there were two military surveillance drones redirected to Benghazi shortly after the attack on the consulate began. They were already in the vicinity. The second surveillance craft was sent to relieve the first drone, perhaps due to fuel issues. Both were capable of sending real-time visuals back to U.S. officials in Washington, D.C. Any U.S. official or agency with proper clearance, including the White House Situation Room, State Department, CIA, Pentagon, and others could call up that video in real time on their computers. Tyrone Woods was later joined at the scene by former Navy, fellow Navy SEAL Glenn Doherty, who was sent in from Tripoli as part of the Global Response Staff, or GRS, 
that provides security to CIA case officers and provides counter surveillance and surveillance protection. They were killed by a mortar shell at 4 a.m. Libyan time, nearly seven hours after the attack at the consulate began. A window that represented more than enough time for the U.S. military to send backup from nearby bases in Europe. According to sources familiar with special operations, four mortars were fired at the annex. The first one struck outside, three more hit the annex. A mortarcade of dozens of Libyan vehicles, some mounted with 50 cal guns, belonging to the February 17th Brigades, a Libyan militia, which is, is supposed to be friendly to the U.S., finally showed up at the CIA annex approximately C, uh, 3 a.m. Uh, so we're talking uh, seven hours, six hours into the attack. These, this militia finally shows up to help. Uh, an American quick re reaction force sent from Tripoli had arrived at 2 a.m., four hours after the initial attack, but they were delayed for 45 minutes at the airport because they couldn't get a ride uh, because the Libyan militias wouldn't give them the escort to the annex. The Libyan militias that were supposed to be our friends. The uh, American Special Operators Woods, Doherty, and at least two others were part of the global response staff, the CIA element based at the CIA annex. Their mission was actually a mission to track and repurchase in Benghazi arms that had prolifer proliferated in the wake of Muammar Gaddafi's fall. Part of their mission was to find more than the 20,000 missing man pads or shoulder head held missiles capable of bringing down commercial aircraft. According to a source on the ground at the time, the, C the team C uh, inside the CIA annex had captured three Libyan attackers and were forced to hand them over to the Libyans. U.S. officials do not know what happened to these three attackers and whether they were released by the Libyan forces. Okay, <clears throat> so, so there, those Navy SEALs are in there to recover weapons, and that's important later because <coughs> you're gonna, we're going to talk about, in, at a future uh, time, about how our government's been arming Al-Qaeda over there. So, of course, the weapons are missing. And then these Navy SEALs are sent in there to track them down, and they can never find them. Um, again, this is uh, polymike.com. Benghazi terror attacks. CIA operatives told twice to stand down during the fight. Plot thickens. Amy Sterling Castle. Um, so, they're repeatedly told, and we don't know who these U.S. De defense and State Department officials are who repeatedly denied help from the Spectre gunship at Siganella, uh, Italy, or told them to stand down at the CIA annex. And, and so we don't know, but Leon Panetta's involved. We know that. We now know about these 20,000 missing handheld missiles that uh, fell during the fall of Gaddafi. That was such a great operation that we helped carry out. Um, the parents of these Navy SEALs, feel like they were lied to to their faces. The father said hey, shaking hands with President Obama was like shaking hands with a dead fist, fish. The mother of Sean Smith, the dead information officer, said some of the people from the government looked me right in the eye and lied to me. So, listen to this. Newsmax. Newsmax exclusive. U.S. hired Al-Qaeda-linked group to defend Benghazi mission. You know, so those people, it's called the, uh, the February 17th Martyrs Brigade. They were paid by the U.S. government to provide security to the U.S. diplomatic mission in Benghazi. Those are the guys that showed up six hours late. Those are the guys who couldn't give our special forces a ride from the airport to come help at the annex. Those guys were hired by our government by our State Department, over which Hillary Clinton was the boss, and their Facebook page has several uh, entries openly professing sympathy for Ansar al-Sharia, who is to blame for the attacks on the consulate. Yeah, that's right. 
So the people we hired to protect the ambassador were friends with the people who attacked and killed him. That's on Newsmax. U.S. hired Al-Qaeda linked group to defend Benghazi mission. So, <coughs> John Bolton, U.S. ambassador, says Benghazi could bring down an Obama administration. His, and, yeah, so, official, CBS News, we knew Benghazi was a terrorist attack from the get-go. So you've got this guy, he's a 22-year veteran, his name's Gregory Hicks. He was the assistant uh, deputy, or the deputy uh, assistant ambassador in Benghazi. So he was the commander of the mission of uh, chief of the mission after Christopher Stevens died. He was in Tripoli when Christ Ambassador Stevens was being murdered in Benghazi. Okay, so this is the guy, the second in command on the ground. He says we knew Benghazi was a terrorist attack from the get go. Everybody in the mission in Benghazi, Libya, thought the attack on the U.S. consulate there last September 11th was a terror attack from the get go according to excerpts from interview investigators conducted from, with the number two official in Libya at the time, obtained by CBS News, Face the Nation. I think everybody in the mission thought it was a terrorist attack from the beginning. Greg Hicks, a 22-year Foreign Service diplomat who was the highest-ranking U.S. official in Libya after the strike, told investigators under the authority of the House Oversight and Government Reform Committee. Hicks... Uh, anyway, we got to go to break here. I hope that you understand that this is bigger than Watergate. This is Occupy Freedom, and we'll be right back after this. back talking about Benghazi I uh, I want it to sink into the American people how serious this is I want you to understand how serious it is when the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton says what does it matter what was going on on the ground what do these lives matter what difference does it make what was going on I want you to I want you to fathom what it was like for those Navy SEALs to fight like that, to ask for help, and no help came. <clears throat> I want that to sink in for you, what that must have been like. Uh, I don't have time to talk about everything else, so this is going to be a two-parter. The next part, I'm going to talk about the cover-up. But I'm, uh, it's hard for me to imagine that you would abandon our soldiers who've dedicated their lives to this nation. The most dedicated soldiers we have are the Navy SEALs, among the most. And we let them die. And it does matter. And it does make a difference. And we need to do something about this president and his administration.